And it's what we were doing. Actually, we solved half of this problem. Uh, we just got um, the pumping power, right? Now we need to get the convective heat transfer coefficient and the average heat transfer coefficient for this isothermal surface. Very important to realize at this point, we have an isothermal surface and we have the three temperatures given, right? The wall, TV in, and TV out, right? That means that we can use the equation for an isothermal surface, right? So uh, to calculate the H value. So both both temperatures are known, so we can calculate the heat transfer rate, right? MCP with the general energy balance. Um, and also the average heat transfer coefficient from the equation for an isothermal surface, variation of the bulk temperature equation. So we get H out of that equation, right? And um, so I'm just getting H out of the previous equation of the isothermal surface temperature. And I get H equals mass flow rate, Cp, uh, the wet perimeter times land natural log of T wall or T surface minus, minus TV, T bulk out, uh, T wall minus T bulk in. So I'm able to get this H value, the convective heat transfer coefficient, and I also I'm able to calculate the heat transfer rate out of the general uh, energy equation. The other thing you can do, you can use this H also and calculate with the bulk temperatures. Um, the the Q value and you will have similar values. So it's another way to do it. Okay, uh, so another common case we can deal in internal convection is uniform heat flux surface. So besides the isothermal surface, we can have now the uniform heat flux surface. And this applies when a pipe surface is exposed to a uniform heat flux. And uh, we want to know the variation of the bulk temperature especially the T bulk out. Uh, so if we want to know the T bulk out, we can, um, when our surface is exposed to uniform heat flux, we can use this equation, where QW is the heat flux, the heat flux that is experiencing the wall, right, or the surface. Uh, T, um, TW, um, in this case, is not here. Uh, M is the mass flow rate. CP is the specific heat at constant pressure, TVO, bulk temperature at the outlet, TVI, bulk temperature at the inlet, P, the wet perimeter, and L is the pipe of the land. Um, so then finally, uh, the heat transfer coefficient is going to be the heat flux divided by delta T. So let's see then how to solve for a uniform heat flux surface. We have a 0.4 meters by 0.4 meters square duct of length 20 meters experiences an uniform heat flux of 850 watt meters square. Atmospheric air at 10 Celsius enters the duct at a mass flow rate of 0.75 kilograms per second. If the surface temperature of the duct at the outlet is 80, find first the air temperature of the duct outlet or TV out, right? and the heat transfer coefficient at the duct outlet. So we want to know two things. We want to know first um, how much is TV out, right? And then knowing TV out, the heat transfer coefficient for this surface that is exposed to heat flux, to uniform heat flux. And I, I told you in previous example that to read the properties, we average the bulk in and the bulk out, right? And then that average, we take it and we read properties of our fluid at that bulk average. Here we don't have the TV out. So what happened when we don't have the TV out? Well, since we don't know the outlet air temperature, we will read the CP value at the inlet temperature of 10 Celsius or 283 Kelvin. So when you don't know, when you cannot get the average, in the previous problem, we were able to do it, right? In this problem, we are not able to get the average of the bulk in and bulk out to read the properties. Then we read all the properties at the bulk inlet, okay? 
So we are going to read then the CP at the inlet temperature of 10, 10 Celsius or 283 Kelvin. Uh, the all other information is given in this example, such as mass flow rate, the flux, TV in, or the bulk in, T wall or T surface, and the length of our um, of our um, surface. So the outlet temperature, I gave you the this equation in the previous slide, right? For a surface that is exposed to a constant flux, and it's T V in or T bulk in plus the flux multiplied by the wet perimeter, right? Multiply it by the length divided by mass flow rate and the CP. So we can get the TV outlet of 46 Celsius. We have a square dock, right? So the wet perimeter becomes uh, straightforward, right? 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4, plus 0.4 or 0.4 by 4. That is what I have in here. Uh, now, the heat transfer coefficient when we expose a surface to a constant flux is the flux divided by delta T, where delta T is the difference of temperature between the wall and TV out. So we have an H value of 24, 25, sorry, watt meter square Kelvin. So that was everything the problem asked. If we want to calculate the heat transfer rate, how much, how we can do it? H times the area for convection times delta T, right? Our gradient of temperature, Newton's cooling law. So we continue with internal convection. Um, now we are going to go towards uh, focus on uh, heat transfer coefficient for laminar and as well as turbulent flow. And I will show you a table that you have again at the end of this chapter in your textbook that summarizes all the nozzle correlations for internal convection. So these are the two main tables you need to know how or be very familiar with, okay, for this internal internal convection. So uh, first, um, I have to remark for laminar flow what happened with the convective heat transfer coefficient. So for fully fully developed laminar flow, uh, the nozzle becomes constant and independent of the actual position in the duct or the Reynolds and the plant. Then for fully, fully developed laminar flow, again, the nozzle becomes a constant only when it is fully laminar flow internal convection. Nozzle is constant. So we can just go to a table in your textbook, table 7.1, and read the nozzles, okay? So you have, depending on the geometry, nozzle number and friction factor for fully developed laminar flow, um, LD over DH less than 100 of Newtonian fluid through a circular and some non-circular duct. Um, so fully developed laminar flow is considered at this, uh, at this condition, right? Where the length divided by the hydraulic diameter is much bigger than 100, okay? So then you can come here, right? And read the nozzle number four. Uh, this is isothermal surface uh, or the case, the, the case that we are just analyzed, the isothermal surface and the constant heat flux surface. Okay, uh, that's why you have these two columns for the nozzles. We have another uh, important equation that I need that you check in your textbook, and it's the Seder Tate equation, and it's equation 742. And why I'm marking this equation? Well, I'm marking this equation because this is the table that you have in your book, table 7.3, that summarizes all the nozzles for internal convection. So this is a table you want to mark for exams and homework. But this table does not show the Seder Tate equation. It is in the chapter, but it is not in the table. So it's a good time for you to write the Seder Tate equation here in your table 7.3. Again, it is not here. You need to add it by hand. The Seder Tate equation, equation 742 in your textbook, as you can see, I took this directly from your textbook, uh, help us to correlate experimental results for liquids in tubes 
and I put here a note in bold uh, to your table in the chapter because it's not there. It's in the book, but not in the table. It's a very simple equation and um, it helps us for liquids in tubes and it's given in this equation, okay? Um, the properties in this equation are based in the bulk temperature and the empirical factor nu b over nu s or the viscosity of the bulk and the surface. B is for bulk, S is for surface. It's introduced to account for the effect of the temperature variation on the physical properties. The equation 742 or the Seder state equation is applied when the surface temperature is uniform in the range of 0.48 prime to uh, 16700 and the difference or the ratio of the viscosity between 0 0.0044 and 9.75. And uh, here is an extra recommendation when using this equation, uh, only when this relationship is, re is greater than two. So again, please add the Seder Tate equation uh, to your table. It is not in the table, so you need to add it because it's very useful again, uh, to give us results for liquids in tubes. That is an application we use a lot, right? We move fluids through pipes or liquids through pipes. So then after looking at these two uh, main equations, uh, let's solve first an example before going further to more correlations. I w again, I want to recall you that in convection, uh, the main strategy is to solve problems is to look for the right nozzles and then solve for convective heat transfer coefficient and then heat transfer rate, right? So it's what we are going to practice a lot in this section. Um, so heat transfer coefficient calculation. We have uh, SAE 10W30 engine oil and it at 65 Celsius and it's flowing uh, through a 3.8 inch schedule tube uh, at a mean velocity of five meters per second. Assume fully developed flow and an isothermal tube surface. Get the heat transfer coefficient and the friction factor. So first of all, the problem is saying that we need to assume fully developed flow. What kind of flow? We don't know. How we can know what kind of regime we are at? We get the Reynolds, right? So in order to get the Reynolds, we need the viscosity and the properties of SAE10W30 oil. So um, this oil at 65 Celsius or 338 Kelvins has a viscosity of 26.66 10 to the minus six and a thermal conductivity of 0.1351 watt meter Kelvin. Uh, from your Appendix, I uh, should be another appendix. This is from another book, but it, it's, it applies, it's nominal sizes of pipes. Uh, the inside diameter of a 3.8 inch schedule tube of wall thickness 0.889 millimeters is 7.747 millimeters. So we have um, the diameter for this nominal uh, pipe size. So now it is time to check for the flow regime using the Reynolds. So the Reynolds is the mean velocity that is given in this problem that is five meters per second times the diameter of our three eight inch cell tube pipe. Um, so we got from tables because it's a nominal pipe divided by the viscosity. Um, that means that we have a laminar flow, this very low Reynolds number and the problem says, assume you have fully developed flow. So we have fully laminar developed flow, right? Since we have fully laminar flow, that means the nozzle becomes constant, right? We said that when we have fully developed laminar flow, the nozzle becomes constant. Then we need to go to our table to read the nozzle because it's just a constant we are going to read from a table. We recall that the problem told us that we are dealing with an isothermal surface. 
So I'm going to read the nozzles isothermal or nozzle for uniform wall temperature isothermal surface. And I have a circular cross-sectional area. So circular cross-sectional area and a nozzle for uniform wall temperature give me a value of 3.658. If we have uniform flux, then you read the first column. In this case, our surface is maintained isothermal. It is not exposed to a uniform flux. So then we know the nozzle from our table. We can get H, right? Once we know the nozzle, we can get the convective heat transfer coefficient easily. So is the nozzle multiplied by the K value divided by the diameter. That gives me around 63.8 watt meter square Kelvin uh, for the convective heat transfer coefficient. And finally, the second question, what is how much is the friction factor? Well, we are dealing with fully developed laminar flow. So for fully developed laminar flow and circular pipe, the friction factor is 64 over the Reynolds, right? Because it's laminar. If it is turbulent, it's a completely different story, right? You need to use an equation or either the Moody chart to get that friction factor. Uh, I'm going to just go through some of the nozzle equations that you have in your textbook or in your, um, in your textbook or in your table. I think all of these are in the table, if I remember correctly. They are summarized here. I'm just going there uh, for you to show you some of them. Uh, so we have, if we have fully turbulent flow and a smooth pipe, we can use your equation 7.61 in your textbook, the d 2 a relationship that is 0 0.023 Reynolds to the 0.8 brown to the N, where N equals 0.4 for heating a fluid and N equals 0.3 for cooling a fluid. Again, uh, you don't need to take notes on this equation, it's in your textbook, equation 761. And we can double check if it is here. And no, I cannot find it. Zero point. Uh, no, that one is not here either. So you might want to take note of this one in the table, but it's in the chapter. It's in the chapter, but not in the table. I'm not sure why this author didn't include all the equations through the chapter in the table, but this seems not to be there in the table, but again, it's in the chapter, equation 7.61, eighth edition of the grade. Um, the fluid properties for this d 2 equation are evaluated at the average ball temperature. That means TB in plus TB out divided by two, like we did in a previous example. Uh, if we have a difference, a significant difference between the surface and ball temperature, we can use equation 762. Uh, that is this equation. And uh, for more accurate correlation for rough as well as smooth pipes, you can use equation 766 in the crate textbook, uh, the green Alinsky. And here you have uh, how to calculate uh, K uh, for liquids and TB over TS uh, for gases. And let me check, I think this one you have it. Uh, yeah, is this one, see? This one is there. Turbulent flow of liquids and gases, brand bigger than one in pipes and ducts. That one is here. So that one you should not add. And even the, the here, the, the restrictions. So the last one you don't have to write down. That is, that one is there. Um, 0.27, let me check if that one, no, that one you don't have it. So these two equations, 7.61 and 7.62, you need to add to your table because they are in the chapter, but not in the table. And this one is in the table, so don't add it. So these are important correlations uh, for turbulent flow internal convection. So let's solve a um, square duct, uh, turbulent flow. Uh, we have an eight meter long insulated square duct of cross section 0.2 meters times 0.2 meters pass through the attic space of a house. Hot air enters the duct at one atmosphere and 80 Celsius. 
at a volumetric flow rate of 0.15 cubic meters per second. The duct surface is isothermal. That means it maintains at uh, 60 Celsius at all times. Use the following properties of the air. So the properties are given. You have the density of the air, the thermal conductivity, the viscosity, the heat capacity, and the prance. And you want to know the exit temperature of the air. The exit temperature here, this TE, the exit temperature at that duct. Uh, first of all, what would be your first uh, kind of step to solve this problem? So what would you do first? The Reynolds number, right? You would get the Reynolds number. You can get a straightforward the Reynolds number. You need to calculate first an hydraulic diameter, right? Because it's not a circular cross-sectional area. That means your hydraulic diameter is going to be four times the cross-sectional area divided by the wet perimeter for this square. Once you know that hydraulic diameter, you will get the Reynolds number and determine in which regime you are. Obviously, at this point, you realize that it's turbulent flow because it's an example and I already got tells you it's turbulent flow. So I guess my hydraulic diameter, four times the cross-sectional area divided by weight perimeter of 0.2, right? Then I calculate the Reynolds number using the volumetric flow rate that it was one of the equations I gave you in previous slides, right? I gave you three types of Reynolds, the Reynolds in terms of uh, mass flow rate and volumetric flow rate and mean frame velocity. So I'm using the volumetric flow rate Reynolds, that is four times because I'm, giving, I'm given the volumetric flow rate. So I'm going to employ the volumetric flow rate for the Reynolds. Four times the volumetric flow rate divided by pi, square uh, the hydraulic diameter and the viscosity. The viscosity that I read uh, for the properties or the fluid or given in the problem. Uh, that gives me uh, 45K, 46K more or less uh, Reynolds. Uh, that means that we are in turbulent regime for sure, right? Uh, I'm going to assume that I have a fully developed turbulent flow in the entire duct. That's an assumption I'm going to make. And also I'm going to assume that I have a smooth pipe. What I'm going to assume is I'm a smooth pipe. So that allows me to use Ditus Boettler equation. And I don't know the material the pipe is made of, right? If I know the material, I can get the roughness. And with the roughness, I can get the friction, right? And maybe use this more accurate correlation that is the Ginelinsky. The Ginelinsky, that's why it's more accurate. Because if you see, it's a much, much more complex equation that includes the friction factor. For this one, you need to first determine the Reynolds, right? Then uh, the, from the Moody chart, get that friction factor. But from the Moody chart, remember, in the y-axis, you need the relative roughness. That is the roughness of the material divided by the diameter. But if you don't know the type of material you are dealing with, you cannot get the roughness. Because the roughness depends if it is new aluminum pipe, old aluminum pipe, new copper pipe, right? Because it accounts all those small kind of features that the pipes develop with time, right? So we don't know that. If we knew the material, well, we can then work maybe with this equation. But since we don't know the material, we are going to assume a smooth pipe. The problem at any stage says you are dealing with a stainless steel, a copper, uh, we don't know the material. So we cannot introduce the roughness or the friction factor correction. That's why uh, we can use the Ditus Boedler. So I'm going to use the Ditus Boedler, assuming fully developed uh, turbulent flow and a smooth pipe. So my Ditus Boedler from previous slides and from the table, now that you added to the table, is 0 0.023 Reynolds to the 0.8 Prance to the N. N equals 0.34 cooling the fluid. The next question for you uh, would be, how you know you are cooling? Yeah, because of the dog surface, right? It says hot enters the dog at 80, and the dog surface is at 60. That means while passing then, the fluid is going to cool. 
So n equals 0.3. So n point three. So then my nozzle is one 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 point one six. Once I know the nozzles, I can get the convective heat transfer coefficient, right? Because the convective heat transfer coefficient is the nozzle times the thermal conductivity that we read from the tables or is given in the problem divided by the hydraulic diameter, right? Remember, all the calculations are done with hydraulic diameter once you already identify that you don't have a circular cross-sectional area. Uh, so 16.41 watt meter, uh, meter square Celsius. Uh, we, have, we are dealing with an isothermal surface, and that's why I did the calculation here for H, because I will be using the isothermal surface equation. Uh, because I know the wall, I know the bulk in, I know age, I can get mass flow rate, the CP, the wet perimeter, and the length. And most important, I'm dealing with an isothermal surface. So if I'm dealing with an isothermal surface, I can use this equation that we previously used in, a, in an example to solve for age, but now to solve for TV out. Okay, so the age value, I just got it. Uh, mass flow rate, I have it here from the volumetric flow rate. You just multiply volumetric flow rate times the density, and that gives you mass flow rate, right? Um, so I have mass flow rate then of 0.1499 kilograms per second. And I have everything to put into my equation for isothermal surface. So the wall temperature minus, so you just have to get TV out out of this equation. So T well minus T well minus T V in exponential of minus, I have a minus there that I forgot here, but um, now I put it, uh, minus the wet perimeter times the length and the convective heat transfer coefficient divided by mass flow rate CP. And uh, remember T wall is 60, T V out is 80. So after solving this equation for TV out, I get 69.98. So that's how much the air is cooling through passing through that isothermal surface, right? The air is centered in an 80, it passes through a wall that is maintained at 60. So we cool down that air up to 69.98 or around 70 Celsius. 